meaning that Centaur, which has been quite a prized pick uh, from last patch and coming into this patch, is still in the pool. I'm going to keep talking about the Brewmaster because I'm surprised that he's not getting played, but uh, Beastmaster seems to be more of a priority for some of these uh, Chinese teams. So Beastmaster getting banned out. Um, we saw Beastmaster getting banned in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, what are his overall stats like in this? Ten seconds remaining. Oh, I'm interested in the overall hero stats for uh, this Five full qualifier. Remaining. So, by far the most contested hero is Grimstroke. He's got 135 combined picks and bans, but only 39 picks, 96 bans. Uh, Dazzle is also up there on sort of the must ban status. He's got 43 picks, 91 bans. Rubik, 72 picks, only a 37.5% win rate, um, and 54 bans. Every support player likes playing Rubik, but I've seen a lot of games in these qualifiers where it's just not a good Rubik game at all. Like, there are still plenty of heroes that Rubik doesn't really do a whole lot against. Like, take the Phantom Assassin, for example, right? You steal Stifling Dagger. What does that actually do? Nothing. It's a, it's a crappy slow. You don't actually have an ultimate on Rubik, so you gotta make sure that you steal useful abilities. Otherwise, you're just walking around chucking a random Fade Bolt and, like, lifting somebody in a fight, which is not that impressive. It's even more, there's even more emphasis on, like, stealing good spells and making proper plays with your spell steal now uh, that you have Arcane Supremacy. You're not buffing the damage for any of your teammates, you're not buffing their magic resistance. The hero pretty much only exists to steal good spells and make big plays with those stolen spells. So I can totally understand why Rubik has a, has a pretty atrocious win rate. Though Centaur also not looking great. 35.9%. We've seen some support Centaurs fall flat on their face uh, this qualifier. What's actually the most picked? Rubik's the most picked. Brewmaster following him up. 50 picks. 64% win rate. That's the big reason why I'm surprised not to see any Brewmaster. Uh, or not much Brewmaster over here in China. It wasn't picked a single time yesterday. It got banned three times and that was it. Um, and okay, we get a El Clasico Super Dragon Knight. Uh, PSG LGD going to round things out with a Weaver, so it is going to uh, it is going to end up being sort of a greedy sort of tricore for them. They've got some really nice minus armor synergy with the Swarm, the Cleave, all of PA's damage. That does make life a little bit easier for Root to kind of itemize. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see, like, the Crimson Guard build coming out of the Sand King. Phoenix gonna try, probably try for a Shiva's, um, in this game, but, uh, I'm excited. So, it is gonna be that, uh, Ame PA, Somnus is gonna be on the Kunkka. So, wait, what happened with this, uh, do I still have this last Kunkka game up? I do not. Okay, never mind. I just wanted to see what he was, what he was looking at. I can still find it. Let's have a quick look. All time hero. Okay, we got, you know, we got, we got time here. There's no way. Teams are taking their strategy time, talking about the lanes. Well, they're probably talking about the lanes during the draft. And I don't think anything too surprising is going to be happening here. DK versus Kunkka mid. Uh, Sand King Phoenix off lane probably, Morphling Bane safe lane. Maybe PSG LGD try and go for some kind of aggro tri lane. Uh, what, they can put the Weaver solo safe and then PA Shaman Undying. Sounds like a pretty good aggro try actually, so could be an option here. Double it. It was maybe laning again. Prepare for Tunka versus Lena. Oh, okay. And it was apparently, according to Dota buff, a draw. So, busting out the Kunkka after a little hiatus. And let's get into it. Again, this is an important match for both of these two teams. They're both at the top of the group right now, so a 2-0 would be a very big deal. Uh, I don't actually know if it's two point if it's uh, three points for a two zero or if it's just uh, two points. I'm not 100 percent sure how the group stage is being run. Liquipedia is showing it as uh, three points for a win and one point for a draw. Uh, but 
Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'll probably, I'll ask in the admin, uh, I'll ask in the Discord in between games and I'll get you guys some confirmation, so. End is going to be down here on the Morphling. They're starting out both supports over at top right now just to try and contest the runes a little bit. And End's not even thinking about coming anywhere out. Uh, it's actually going to be, okay, just Weaver Shaman, Undying PA. Kunkka is going to be going for this oh-so-popular double bracer that we've been seeing so far. Super also going to be doing the same thing. And PSG LGD, having seen three heroes up here, just going to throw out a decay and then call it a day. They're going to be giving away these bounties to DDC and Yao. Neverend starts to morph it into some Adji. All right, and Bane immediately TPing bottom. So just a kind of an easy way to secure double bounties without things getting messy. Uh, DDC's cool, the TP is going to be on cooldown for a little bit, but I don't think that should matter too much. FY, as I was saying, is able to be a little bit greedier since they've got the Undying. Uh, so he is going to be able to get some fast boots here, hopefully. And yeah, already with the point up in the Sandstorm. To me, this is really the big reason that they picked the Sand King over the... Uh, the centaur. Oh, they might just think it's a better hero, but also I think it's just better in lane against the EA. So we'll have to see how he does. Mid lane is pretty damn boring, so barring any rotations, I don't think anything's really going to be happening here. Super's got good sustain versus the cleave, but Kunke should still be able to CS just fine. He doesn't really care about the breathe fire too much. And he can always just X marks the spot and TP back if he needs to, so. Plenty of healing. He'll be just fine. TR have already popped down a sentry ward here to help out a little bit against the Weaver as damage is getting traded at bottom. DDC even using the brain sap just for a little bit of CS. Uh, so this game... What? A little bit greedier lineup on LGD. I would say maybe a little bit better late game from them as well just because they are running the full tricore. So, a bit more pressure on, uh, TR. Why is Super's tag TG? Oh, he used to play on Team Green, right? I think that's the, the reason. But yeah, Team Root. A little bit more pressure on them to make plays happen, I think. Uh, definitely gotta get this, get some items up on the Sand King, get him to start rotating around. And I'm gonna keep a, I wanna keep a close eye on Yao's build, because in Southeast Asia, the Vanguard on Sand King was inordinately popular. I think it was more popular than it should have been uh, because people were just kind of copying one another. Oh, that sucks. Victoria pops down that ward, but it immediately gets dealt with. PA still seems to be farming just fine. That's one of the nice things about PA as a hero is even in a really pressured lane, you can still get farm. Like, even if you're forced to just sit back and throw daggers, you can still CS just fine that way. It's not the worst thing in the world to uh, be pressured in lane as PA. And you're seeing it here, Ame. Farming pretty fantastically. Eh, two big full HP heroes just slapping each other at mid. FY still got tons of regen down bottom. Uh, looks like we haven't seen too many efforts for the side pull. Both DDC and FY have been keeping close tabs on one another. Uh, really denying any side pull opportunities. There's, there's some... I, I guess it's not mind games, but there is some nice high level support play going on here. Both of them playing on this left side of the lane because they just don't want to give access either way to this pull camp. That would be a big advantage one way or the other. But it does seem like LGD kind of nickel and diming their way to a little bit of a lead. Victoria does bring a sentry ward up here but only ends up dewarding the sentry, so... Eh, it is still valuable for the Sand King that they get rid of that. Whoop. Shackle onto the Bane. Trouble for DDC, he does have stick charges and the brain sap, but he's still going to be brought down, it's just way too much damage. Chalice is extremely low, but will not be brought down, and FY still laying in with the auto attacks against End. Even morphs up a little bit of strength, just in case. Oh, DDC not cautious enough on the positioning, and LGD going to very quickly punish him there with the level 2 on both of their heroes. And just not a whole lot of that the Morphling can do, he can't really peel. He can throw out a somewhat ineffective adaptive strike, but even that's still going to take time to even reach. 
All right, BDT dead. At least he comes back to the lane with full mana. Chalice still had a salve, so he's going to be okay up top. Not my force to jump himself away. Yeah, just with a 1-1-1 build so far. Uh, still just thinking about some boots, as we do have maybe finding himself an illusion rune. Mid lane, dead even, dead boring. Not a whole lot to talk about for this matchup. Action up top, they are looking towards the Phoenix. Dive away is going to keep him just fine. Yeah, well, Sandstorm is actually on cooldown. It's to be a little bit careful. They are going to try and deal with the Tombstone quickly. First strike through just to make sure that the Soul Rip doesn't happen. And X Nova. Still content to just sit here on the front lines, however. Ooh, and Morphling down bottom, trying to contest for this bounce here and does just end up dying. Wait, his Bane wasn't even anywhere nearby. What even, what just happened? And now Phoenix is getting run at. Team Root really wanted these runes. Looks like they might pay with the Phoenix life for this one. He does get both of the top bounties. But still, three to nothing lead in LGD's favor. I thought that this matchup was going to be pretty close, but it does seem like LGD taking the advantage in the laning stage. Uh, what kind of rotation possibilities do Root have? The Phoenix isn't really so great at ganking anymore, and again, I just don't know if you can really gank this Kunkka. Uh, they could try for like a walk-up, nightmare setup, tanking TPs kind of a thing, but uh, that would be a pretty big commitment just to find that kill. Uh, I don't know if they want to try for that. FY is mid. They are sizing up this Dragon Knight. I think he mostly just came here to plant the ward, but... Going to continue tenderizing the DK. He does have level 6. He's got his double bracer, so... Deceptively tanky. And Victoria did try and rotate over to mid, but... Getting pinged out. It looks like neither support going to stick around here for too much longer. Interesting to see the Weaver. He was not very popular in Southeast Asia whatsoever, but... PSG LGD still liking him here. Uh, I would imagine that we see... Maybe a bit more of a utility build out of the Weaver this game. Agadim Scepter sooner rather than later. I'm interested to see what Kanka goes for. If he gets the Shadow Blade first, if he gets if he bothers with an armlet. <clears throat> what else is even good here? Is it a good Halberd game? It is actually quite a good Halberd game. Uh, if maybe he wants to go for that. I mean good against the DK, good against the Morphling. Yeah, I'm just maxing out the Sandstorm so far. And very standard build. I don't know if we've seen any deviation from this build on Morphling. Triple Wraith Ban, get the Morbid Mask, buy some treads, start hitting jungle creeps. And none of the supports feeling like they can actually... Well, especially with the mid lane matchup, there's no real rotation potential here. So everybody just forced to hunker down in their lanes, but... While everybody's hunkering down, it does seem like it's LGD getting a slight advantage, though. You know, most people pretty close to their counterparts. 44, 42, 46, 41, 27, 31. So not a huge lead, really, to be found anywhere. FY. Lurking in these trees. This is a nice wraparound if they can find it. They're gonna get the Shackle over under the Morphling. This is just a bit of free damage. I don't think they should be able to kill him, but they actually do! There's enough damage! He couldn't get the morph off, and he just gets zapped down that ether shock from FY. And I really underestimated how much they could find here. Chalice. Alright. Nightmare gets woken up by the fire spirit tick, so he's gonna be okay. Does have another Shikuchi ready to go. And the shrine is ready as well, so they get that free morphling kill. And get themselves out of there. Up top. Yeah, getting gone on. They do have the level 6 on the PA now. Fishing for a couple of crits is Ame. He's rolled five or six times, hasn't found anything yet, finds one last jump. Yao trying to dodge the dagger, but doesn't manage to do it. This brings him back in range of X Nova, who immediately de immediately decays him down. And LGD continuing to... They're only barely finding these kills. They seem to have a really, really good sense of how much damage they're able to do. DDC can't get the brain sap off. Nice rotation coming in from Baby. PSG LGD now looking to push bottom. Super does have his ultimate available. He could just choose to push mid. But instead, he wants to defend this bottom tower. The Phoenix is also down here. This is a big commitment and a big decision from Team Root to go for this. 
Neverend does manage to morph himself into the Weaver. He gets that swarm out, turn around, do some damage onto maybe. He hasn't cast the boat just yet, so he's actually going to get right click down. This is a big commitment, but it's working out nicely. Callus, can he also escape the Shikuchi just about to run out? He's still slowed by the dive a little bit. Super's got him with the Dragon Tail. Looks like they might be able to finish him. Nope, Chalice. One more Shikuchi. Still has some stick charges. GDC's hunting for him. Bagger and Chalice even trying to turn this around. Just threatening DDC's life a little bit. As Team Root. Very nice play. Yao dropping the epicenter at top, but uh X Nova is gonna be just fine. So what? They only get the one kill. But still pretty nice that they bring down the Kunkka. He is the most farmed hero on the map at the moment. So without that boat buff, still possible for them to bring him down. The Morphling did quite a lot of damage in that fight. Mikuchi threw a couple of people, threw out the swarm. Definitely nice. FY just hard committing the Mass Serpent Wards at mid. Now looking over towards the Morphling. Super running forward is going to get shackled up. They've got the Tarrant bow and he's still being locked down. They're trying to break the combo. Super tanky, but I don't know if it's tanky enough. Chalice should be able to chase him. FY with that second Aether Shock just doing so much damage on this push. And end not really able to do anything. Yao comes through with the birth strike, but he needs to be careful. X marks the spot is on cooldown for now. He's on the run. Jukes back into the torrent. Nicely mind gamed by maybe. And PSG LGD just run him down. They've got the sustain from the arcane boots already up on FY. And this is going to be a nice early tier 1 tower. A pretty brave move for them to rotate four heroes mid like that, but... Pay his dividends and the team root supports... He's not really in a position to fight just yet. DDC's got this Fiend's Grip, which he is very keen to turn into a kill. I think he's even, what, he's pinging for TPs. He just wants to walk up and Fiend's Grip Ame. Ame's blurt. But it's only 600 range, right? Yeah, 600 radius that you get revealed. Actually pretty ridiculous. Hero farms so safely now. And then anyway, PSG LGD just going to turn their attention to bottom. X Nova not down here just yet. They did manage to get a couple of deep wards as well. So LGD really setting themselves up for success. They've actually got so much vision on the map at the moment. Let's, let's switch it over to Dire Vision. They just, they see everything. They see all five heroes from Team Root. Who are... Okay, they are actually smoked. Never mind. They, you can see them on the minimap, but no. Rotating down here. Tower's almost dead. FY gets the last hit. He's gonna get slowed up. They drop the supernova as well. Dragon Tail looking like FY is 100% gone. They've also managed to catch the Fiend Script onto the Weaver. Follow-up stun from the supernova, but he gets the time lapse off, and that's right back to full HP. Chalice looking like he's going to be okay. He was on strength treads when he got gripped. So a lot of additional HP there. I think if he'd been on inter Agi, he actually would have died. But they only lose FY. Still some pretty nice gold for the Phoenix team root. Finally un uh, unleashing those ultimates from the two supports. It's really what they needed. Feels like LGD has just kind of outdone them on the support play so far this game. Getting a lot more value out. Wrap around from behind. Super TPing up here feeling like he was safe, but they've got the torrent, they've got the boat. It's tons of magical damage. FY just walks up. He's not even casting any spells just yet. He's looking for more heroes trying to help out this Dragon Knight, but nothing that the Phoenix can do. He throws a couple of Fire Spirits, and that's about it. ESG LGD just rallying around these support cooldowns. Rotating so nicely on their Kanka, and really catching out Team Root at every opportunity. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And DDC doesn't have the Fiend's Grip available. Pops in a sentry. That uh, is going to deter Chalice from chasing Radiance any further. Morphling just farming jungle. We've been seeing this a lot. Morphling just not really able to fight all that early. Trying to farm up, but losing a lot of space on the map. But nobody really creating that space. I almost wonder if it would have been better. Would it have been better earlier for Team Root to just give away bottom tier 1 and take the mid tier 1 with the Dragon Knight? We've seen DK Ultimate popped multiple times so far. But Super hasn't been able to hit a tower a single time. And Team Root, oh my god, there's just a line of vision all the way across the map. Can they at least get a couple of D-Wards here? Okay, right. They get they get the one. But this Observer Ward's still going to be up here for a little while longer. This one's got about half duration, and this one 
about half duration as well. So lots of vision for PSG LGD to be able to gank to. And FY, I said that he might be a little bit greedier on the Shadow Shaman, and he's proving that right now, as he's going to pick up a Midas. So... If this game goes on too long, we might be talking about, like, a Ags Refresher Shadow Shaman. And that is just going to be insanely difficult for Team Root to deal with. Shaman feels like one of those supports, and there's not that many of them, or like even just one of those heroes that, in the late game, he can just win you the game all by himself. Like, I would say Enigma is kind of one of those heroes as well, where if you just drop a double Midnight Pulse Black Hole on a team, that can just end the game right there, and Shaman feels very similar with the, the Ag Serpent Wards with a Refresher, maybe even a Refresher Shard. There is good Roshan, there's amazing Roshan taking potential on LGD's side. I mean, there's quite good team fight on Team Root, and they've almost got this Blink Dagger up on Yao. I've been focusing on the supports for the last little bit, in terms of Team Root needing to use those big abilities, but... the Sand King Blink also going to be very important. So yeah, what can you do here? Three sheets to the wind. This Blink Dagger reveal needs to do some work. Chalice is just going for a Spirit Vessel on his Weaver. So that's going to be super annoying for the Dragonite. Uh, and for the Morphlame. BK even Radiant just going for a first item BKB. Super feeling like they're just falling further and further behind in this game. And they need to get ready to take some fights. Morphling is going to be going for the Dragon Lance. To the Manta style. But... Man, DK would be such a good throw if Spirit Vessel didn't exist, but... Radiance bottom tower oh, oh, and yet no. Maybe he's looking for him. Happy Center gonna end up being cancelled quickly. I think they could have held the... Uh, maybe just wanted to cancel the Epi more than he uh, wanted to try and combo him there. I think he could have set up the Torrent Boat properly. Even if the Epi Center goes off, I don't think anybody dies. Epi cancelled, that blink not doing anything. Yeah, it does have three points in the bar strike, so even without the epicenter, you still should be able to get some value out of the blink dagger, but LGD are just controlling the radiant side of the map and completely farming up. Super has managed to start getting a little bit more farm over on this top side of the map. There's also some nice observer wards from Team Root, as we see this standard split of Radiant taking over the dire side of the map, Dire taking over the radiant side of the map. And Team Root, alright. They are going to be going for a smoke. Dragon is still showing at mid. Morphling has got his Dragon Lance. He's keen to try and take a fight. Phantom Assassin does have her Battle Fear already up. He's just going to be going straight in for the BKB after that. And Team Root, they see heroes here, but Nova's going to be able to break that smoke. And DDC just having to back off. Oh, the fact that they can't smoke to this vision just hurts so much. I think a lot of it is because the Shrine is off cooldown, so... Not easy to go for. Kunkka did just end up going for the first item. Shadow Blade here. He doesn't need it. His team doesn't have a whole lot of initiation. Especially with the, the Weaver as their offlaner. So I think it makes sense that they try and get an initiation item on the Kunkka. And not... I mean, people don't really buy Blink on Kunkka. At least not first. You can sometimes see the Blink after you've got like double Daedalus and a Rapier. And you need to just get in and one-shot people. But... Super, just a farming ultimate. He's got his BKB completed now, so... We'll be able to stand relatively strong in these team fights. Yes, GLGD's turn to go for a smoke, but I think this may have been scouted by those Radiant Observer Wards. They did pop down a sentry before they went for it though, so they may have actually outranged it. We'll have to see. Team Root don't seem like they know Yao. It's gonna get caught by the torrent. Nicely done by maybe setting this up. They've also got the dust through. Just need to land this boat. Easy combination. Followed up with the hex from FY, who does already have his experience gain talent, and he's got his April ends, so his game is looking cushy. Nice and easy. Team Root do come in here and completely deward their side of the map, but they're not gonna be able to play here uh, and over on the top. And even though they've dewarded it, they've only got the one observer ward left. So it's actually not that easy for them to play in their own jungle. But they are just doing it as a team. Smoking up now. This is somewhat unexpected. Yao's going to be respawning soon. LGD already in the pit. They've put down the Mass Serpent Wards. 
They've put down the tombstone. They've, they've done everything right to set up for this fight. Chow's gonna come out. He's gonna get caught by the X marks the spot. Whose X was that? Was that Kunkka's X? That oh, was actually Kunkka's X. I don't know what that was about, but... Alright. Aegis for free? Maybe. Needs to be careful. X still gonna take a little while to pop, and they're still just gonna wait for him at the other end of this. He throws out the boat for the damage reduction. That's gonna help keep him alive. Chalice will turn around and help out with these zombies. Super chasing forward, looking for more. Chalice with the quick check for detection, realizes that there's no dust. So does just go in for a little bit more harassment, and Ame is just going to be pushing out bottom. Relying on his team to defend mid, they do get the burst strike out of the Weaver. He's quite tanky, follow-up damage is too much, though. And Team Root quickly bring him down. They also get that tier 1 tower, and finding some good farm, and there's a big... Big old creep wave waiting for him over at top. Okay. So they lose the position three. They're still ahead by 7k. Net worth and experience have just been steadily moving in LGD's direction this entire game. Dota Plus likes them a lot, giving them the 88% chance to win. And as soon as they get this double BKB timing, I think it's going to be insanely difficult for Team Root. At that point, the PA and the Kunkka don't really care about the Sand King, they don't really care about the Phoenix. Uh, the Morphling still does some physical damage, but not a crazy amount. It's going to be very important. The initiation is going to be so important. I don't think Team Root can take a fight away from a ward. they got to fight near some high grounds. Either fight near high ground ward spots or fight up hills or something, because... Otherwise, if they get jumped, they're just gonna get be completely screwed. DDC, next up, shaggled, easy kill. <laughs> I may even try to snipe that one with the dagger, but doesn't find it. And now with the mass serpent wards, just providing this easy sort of timing for LGD to keep on pushing. I don't even know if they need it for this mid push. Dire structures are fortified. And all right. BKB number one delivered, BKB two very close for the Kanka. Gonna send Super in on the front lines, he's gonna be going for a Silver Edge this game to try and deal with the PA. PSG LGD, couple more hits to take this tower, BKB gets popped, I'm just gonna go with, they do pop the Glyph, holding onto the tower a little bit longer, so they've still got the Armor Aura, that also helps Yao jumps into the back line, he found the two supports, should be able to focus them down, great positioning from Yao. The boat is going to disengage this for LGD as they just run for the hills. Oh man, where did Yao even come from in that fight? Looks like he just managed to maybe sneak over from the shrine. Or he was waiting in the trees the whole time, but... They killed the two supports instantaneously. No Mass Serpent Wards or anything from FY. And the Tier 1 tower does end up going down. Oh, the Tier 2 tower, sorry, at the end of the day does end up going down. But Good fight for Team Root. Gonna give them some golden experience back that they desperately need. Uh, how are we doing on levels? Couple of level 15 talents coming up across the board. That cast range on the Shaman, a pretty big deal. Uh, Kanka getting his HP regen talent. And Sanking close to the uh, Sandstone DPS, but not quite there just yet. Amit he looks at Victoria. Just gonna drive him away here. It's just going to be going for the Basher next. It, everybody seems to be going for this build. The, the Battle Fury taking the 30% Cleave Talent, not buying Deso or anything. Just the BKB straight into the Basher. That's interesting. I wonder why the... I'm not sure why the Deso has gone out of fashion. Maybe it's just because PA has enough damage anyway? But also the three Armor Corruption Talent used to be really popular. I, I don't know what to make of the... 30% cleave being a bigger deal. Oh, super long range hex on the super. Gonna catch him with the torrent. Just a little bit of poking and prodding going on. Mass Serpent Ward's dropped up on the high ground, but the creep wave has already been cleared out. Never end pops his Manta style just to help clear these out that little bit more quickly. Weaver is has been nightmared up. 
Gunkin gets first struck, still has the BKB, he's gonna pop it, now gonna look for a target, but he does get Fiend script. Ame just chops off DDC's head, however. Now they've got the Phoenix Sun in the middle of everything, but they've brought down Yao. No damage from him, they're gonna end up losing FY, it's just support death so far. Yao also buying back into the game, and Kunkka getting caught on the retreat, but Ame comes in with two crits, puts an end to the Phoenix, he does get caught by the Burrow Strike, he's still got the Aegis, but it's actually being reclaimed in the middle of this fight! Yao continues pursuit, Ame gets finished off, and that's a double kill for End. It's an expensive fight for Team Root, but they are getting so many kills. Hunka manages to get out of the edge of that Sunray. And looks like maybe we'll be able to get out of here, but... The two buybacks. Lots of gold for the Morphling. And bringing down that PA, a very big deal. LGD, they didn't even manage to take out the Tier 3 tower. So it is going to have to be back to the drawing board for them for a little bit. They did get a nice high ground Observer Ward up here. Team Root definitely need to make sure that they... Uh, well, they don't they haven't de-warded at all, so they gotta de-ward and like check this spot and make sure that they check over here. Can't afford to leave those wards up. Anytime the enemy team pushes your base, you gotta you gotta try and de-ward it. You can't can't let them have high ground vision inside of your base. It's just too scary. So all right, FY is gonna be going for a blink BKB. Phoenix, as expected, gonna go for the Shivas. DDC doesn't really have any items. DK's got his Shadow Blade and actually almost has the Silver Edge now as well. So we'll see if that's going to be the answer that they need against this Phantom Assassin. She's farming nicely, but the Morphling has managed to close the gap, getting some kills in these last couple of fights. And Team Root just setting their sights on this bottom Tier 1 tower. They're looking for Chalice, they're stacking their stuns a little bit. Do they actually have enough to bring him down? They do. They drop everything that they've got. And do manage to finish him off. The script was just cooling down at the same time. And morph. Alright. Two defensive items. Gets the Manta, gets the BKB. Doesn't have to worry so much about this Spirit Vessel anymore. Um, and Chalice starting to feel like he's falling off a little bit. Super just takes this tower for free. Gonna go grab the Silver Edge. FY. Relying on blink reactions to get out of here, but he's being burrow struck and he's looking like he's just 100% dead. Tries for the TP even, but very optimistic. So down he goes, and LGD starting to feed some kills back. The net worth lead down to 1k, and experience for the first time this game actually in favor of Team Root. Anka just gonna go for the AC. But Super's Dragonite. Could find the initiation that they need on the PA. They can stun him, break him, and then hopefully right-click him down. Yeah, it does almost have this Abyssal Blade. And again, initiation is the name of the game. Whoever gets the jump prevents the other team from getting off their BKBs and should be able to win the fight as a result. BK, BKB is still a healthy 9 seconds. Morphling just grabbed his, so it's 10. And Team Root going for another smoke. They, they really needed to deward this high ground, but I don't think they've been scouted here. Alright. Coming through. Got a couple of sentries on DDC. They're showing the Phoenix in the lane to make this at least a little bit less suspicious. They're gonna pop the DK ultimate. Super's got that Elder Dragon form. Level 3, they run forward. They spot FY, he gets the blink away. Super was on top of the sentry ward there, so good reaction from FY. And Team Root left empty-handed, so LGD are now probably thinking to themselves, hey, we saw that the DK ultimate was used, let's just wait that out, and then we can go for something. Roshan's not going to be up for another two minutes, and Team Root still hunting for something, but... PSG LGD just slowly kiting them across the map, and this, uh, this ward going to be very quickly dealt with by the creep wave. Yeah, has his Yule Scepter now. Both teams kind of setting up for the Roshan, since it could potentially... As far as they're concerned, it could already be up. They're going to keep on checking it and just trying to establish vision superiority over the area. Yeah, pushing bottom.
thinking that they they know that she's over here. They saw that creep wave die, but a little bit too late to find anything. Yeah, not even clearing the small camp. I'm just gonna go back and take the safer farm over on his side of the map. There are bounty runes coming up soon, so if he gets greedy for those, then that could end up being his undoing. What's his vision look like? He's got a lot of vision over here. That might make him feel a bit more confident, but... I see that most of these heroes are on the bottom side of the map. Ooh, and they just caught the edge of that Sand King TP going top. Uh, maybe he was already backing out. He wasn't He wasn't doing anything too crazy. Radiant are scanning. Uh, Team Brute need vision the Radiant's pit so badly. Is under attack. Yeah, Radiant even... They, they, they just don't know what's going on. They don't know if Roshan's up yet. They don't have any vision on the way over there. They have to check all of these spots along the way. And DDT doesn't even have an OBS. So, comes in. He sees the sentry. He's afraid. He's thinking that the Roshan could be going on right this second. A quick D ward for him. LGD don't really know too much more either. Both teams just continue to play the lane control game. They're trying to intercept this Kunkka. Maybe can he escape? Looks like he's just barely going to get the TP out. Chose a good spot. I'll take your tribute. Yeah, okay. So they've been struggling with this map control situation for the last little bit. And their bid for that is going to be picking up this gem. Just trying to deward their t entire side of the map. And this observer ward has been placed pretty far back, so difficult to get the deward on. But yeah, I'm gonna come forward. He spots it now. All right, quick deward. Super pops the elder dragon form. Nobody on LGD showing for now. The battle is still for Roshan. It has respawned Aegis and Cheese, for the prize for whoever claims that. And we do have a couple of notable buybacks, both mid lane heroes and FY with his uh, his Midas. Both have enough money in reserve to be able to go for a buyback here. And this new blur is actually so strong for this. Sure, you can't use it to take the rush, but just in terms of scouting, like, oh, is there anybody here? Oh, I may just get... The sentry ward just dies mysteriously. I wonder what that was about. I may just head straight into the pit. PSG LGD, they just decide, screw it, we're just gonna go for this. They've got good team fight and team root. They don't know that this is happening. They're running over now, they see X Nova near the pit, but the Roshan's almost dead already. Super is gonna get the Dragon Tail over onto X Nova. Yao jumps in, but it's only a first strike onto the Undying. They're focusing a lot of abilities here. Super, nice nightmare save is gonna give him the chance to get off the BKB, but Ame's already jumping into the back line. He brings down DDC, the Supernova is getting charged up, should connect nicely. They couldn't do anything about it. They pop out, they've lost Yao though, and Super with no Elder Dragon form can't really fight. They get the lockdown onto the Phoenix. And finish him off. Morphling unable to commit to this either. He did pop the BKB and try and stand and get some auto attacks out. Actually morphing into the Undying there to pop down the Tombstone. But turned out to be not too much of a problem. PSG LGD still have the Aegis on the PA. And now they're just going to head up on up onto the high ground. Chalice actually had the... Wait, did he have the... Exalt in that fight? Looks like he might have... That might have been what saved X Nova, actually. Remember they used it on Ami? Anyway. Gem handed over by Yao, PSG LGD, heading in, gonna grab at least the one lane of Rax. Buyback from the Sand King, PSG LGD pushing pretty damn quickly. This tier 3 was already low from earlier. Dragonite once again, popping that Elder Dragon form. They're thinking about Ame, they break him up. Do they have enough right-click damage for him? They're focusing on Exnova now instead, just splitting the damage. Yeah, once again caught by the Torrent Boat. He's gonna get brought down. The Abyssal Blade for Ame also helping the case there. They're looking for some bashes here onto Never End. They get the Fiend's Grip onto the PA, holding him down, but the evasion is just too much. They can't actually kill him, and the Tombstone Zombies are just building and building. Super about to be brought down, does get finished off, dead for 60, no buyback, X marks the spot on the Morphling. They've also got another Spirit Vessel charge for him as they drag him back into the range of FY's hacks. And this is looking like it should just be the end of this game number one. GG called by Super. They got outdone in the lanes. They did... The only thing that went well this game for Team Root was that high ground defense. Other than that, they lost both of the 2v2s. Mid lane was kind of a wash. The rotations from PSG LGD in the early game were just that little bit more crisp. They knew exactly.